two minutes. Time having arrived, uh, thank you all for coming this evening. Um, unless there is a, uh, a wish to do so, I will dispense with the reading of the notice for the third time. Uh, just to say this is our third meeting of a 40B uh, for the Lakeview uh, Eaton uh, Comprehensive Program. People hear you. We have a microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought I was uh, making enough noise, apparently I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you again, and I'm going to dispense with the reading of the entire notice of the public hearing, but except to say that this is our third session. Um, this evening we have uh, a number of uh, items to go through. The first is a housekeeping issue. Uh, this is something that was established last time, or last time we met, and uh, this is uh, uh, what they call a 53G, which is setting up an account for peer review. And uh, to explain the peer review and how we're going to go through that, I'm going to turn it over to Chris uh, Heap, our uh, uh, town council. Uh, thank you. Um, I think the, t we, the CBA ought to already have, I think, set up a 53G account uh, generally in town. But what ought to happen tonight is um, that the, we're going to talk about um, sending out a scope for a traffic peer review consultant to get to work on um, and we we've uh, prepared a scope for the board to review um, but what we don't have back yet is a uh, um, a proposal to conduct that scope from a consultant uh, so that uh, ought to happen after tonight uh, the board ought to vote to um, I think authorize staff to retain a peer review traffic consultant and uh, obtain the agreement of the applicant to fund uh, the 53G account in the amount um, that is estimated by the consultant to conduct those services. So uh, we don't know exactly what that dollar amount is as we sit here right now, but we know we will need some peer review funds from the applicant um, in order to conduct that traffic peer review. So we'll, I think, need uh, agreement on it at least two points which is uh that staff uh is ought to be directed to go out and uh get that consultant up and running and working and the applicant ought to be directed to uh fund the 53g account in uh the necessary amount uh once we find out what that uh amount is from the consultant that we're going to go with okay so the first order of business then would be simply to um, ask the board uh, for a motion to create and fund the uh, 53G account for the purposes at this point of any peer review, um, including the scope for the traffic peer review that, that is the first one on the, on the agenda. Do we have a motion? So moves. For your second. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor? I'll show 500 and 53G. Um, I would ask, um, Teddy, you representing uh, the applicant? Are you accepted? Given acceptance to that? Uh, I, I, we have no problem. Okay. Uh, just make sure the microphone's on. Let me just uh, make sure the microphone's on for you, Teddy. Thank you. Ken, there's one here too if you want to use that. Uh, no, I think that's the one. No, that's no. the one we want him to use. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me all right? Good. Uh, we have no problem, uh, Mr. Chairman, about funding uh, the peer review account. I would like to, uh, in a few minutes, talk about uh, the scoping of that and what we would like uh, to happen in terms of sequence of events. Uh, whenever, whenever you're ready, uh, I do have a statement to make at the beginning, but you tell me at what order you'd like me to address it. Well, at first I was going to um, have the board uh, look at the, at the scope for the traffic review uh, and uh, go to Gene to, to give us a quick um, discussion or, or presentation on, on that scope for the uh, peer review on the traffic, which is one of our major control, major concerns for this particular project. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see if I can 
pull up on the screen. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. Please, if, if you can't hear us at any time, just wave your hand so that we know um, that we're not enunciating because this, in my opinion, nothing more annoying than coming out to a meeting and not being able to hear anything. So um, we have microphones tonight and we're excited to get the ball rolling. So um, while Julie pulls up the uh, scope that we worked on, staff um, spent a fair amount of time plowing through kind of the comments that we've heard, um, some of the things that we're familiar with from having done previous peer review studies, and this again has to do with traffic and parking. So that's, that's all we're really going to talk about for right now. There's more to follow. But as we discussed the last at the last meeting, we really thought that jumping in first and foremost with having a consultant hired by the town, paid for by the developer, to go through and evaluate the impact of this project from a parking and traffic point of view so that we can really understand it a little more broadly. So we talked about um, the tasks that we would um, envision the consultant taking on, and um, we broke it down into um, task A, task said A1, A2, B, and then C is really more the meetings and the schedule. So it really broke down into A, A1, and A2. So I think Julie has it up on the screen. Thank you. Yes. We could. If I could figure it out, I'm going to ask for a round of applause. I think I, I was trained on this, but that was number three. Okay. Now. Uh, three panels. Oh, six one, six one, two, switch. Hey, ooh, that's that better. better. It's better. Satisfactory. Okay, now back to the work at hand after I've done the audio, audio video part. Mm -hmm. So task A, as you can see, um, it has to do with um, the review component of what's before this board. And that's referred to as a traffic impact and access study. So that's what we're talking about in task A. Um, the first um, small A is a review um, per the Institute of Transportation Engineers. That's a kind of a fancy group that is very expert in this. And they have what's called a trip generation manual. So that would be one set of criteria that the consultant would be looking at. Then we have the MassDOT Transportation Impact Assessment. Um, that's another set of criteria and guidelines from the state. MassDOT is the Mass Department of Transportation for anyone other than a city planner in this room. Um, the Town of Reading Zoning Bylaw and the General Bylaws, that would be another thing that would be reviewed. Um, specifically parking. Um, when we say ADA requirements, and this is on the website, right, Julie? Yes, yeah, it's from the website. Yeah, so Julie just pulled this off of the town website in case anybody um, doesn't have enough of it tonight and wants to go back of it in the future. Um, so the, the parking, the Americans with Disabilities requirements, the handicap access and emergency access, those are all um, components of the Reading Zoning Bylaw mostly, and then there's probably some general information in the general bylaw. Um, the Town of Reading has a complete streets policy, and so we feel that having the pedestrian safety um, and the impacts of the project on street crossings and movement along sidewalks, those would all fall under the complete streets policy. And then the town also has driveway design standards, so the consultant would be asked to look at this project and how it meets those driveway design standards that the town has. 
And then the last thing is the Town of Reading subdivision regulations. And so we would want to know um, what would be required to bring the road up to town standards and the adequacy of a road for adoption by the town. So the, sub the subdivision guidelines, um, although not applicable to this development, we feel are um, one, one benchmark that we could look to to say, what's the, what's the baseline that this street should be brought up to? So then moving on, um, it talks about adequacy and appropriateness of the study area, transportation infrastructure, intersection capacity analyses, um, some more impact analysis in terms of traffic and the neighborhood roadways. Um, we've suggested that including the complete intersection capacity analysis at all intersections in the neighborhood bounded by John Street, Lakeview Ave, Eaton Street, Green Street, and Salem Street. And this um, is further outlined in task A below, but I want to uh, give credit where it's due to the neighbors that came to our la last meeting and, and walked us through some of their concerns about the impact broadly, and I think the term was holistically, which I think is a great term, so that's what that's driving at. Um, but then we got, want to look at baseline data, and that's further explained in A2. Uh, future traffic volume projections, design of the site access drives, site distance elevations, and any recommendations included in the TIAS, that's the Traffic Impact and Access Study. Um, so we also call out the review and response to concerns outlined in the neighborhood response to Eaton Lakeview Apartments Chapter 40B Comprehensive Permit Application dated February 28, 2018. That's the written um, narrative that we received from the neighbors. And then the consultant would confer with staff to uh, gain any additional understanding of any specific concerns that the town may have. Um, and the town will draft an initial memorandum of findings summarizing the comments and if needed, recommendations to address issues. And we go on to say all findings, reports, and recommendations shall include a comprehensive review of the additional intersections and best available data noted in task A1 and A2. So I can go through this. Um, um, more if you'd like, but uh, that that's pretty much what we're talking about. Um, it goes into a little bit more de detail on A1 as far as, um, Julie's got it up there, those are the streets. So Walkers, Brook Drive, and John Street, and these are, again, the intersections uh, that we're calling out the TIAS called out uh, Walkers Brook John, Walkers Brook Lakeview, Eaton Pleasant, Lakeview Eaton, and Site Driveway. So that's sort of what's the baseline of what the um, applicant has provided, what task A1 would, would include, which I've said a couple of times here is expanding the study area and you can see up on the on the screen all those additional um, intersections that go broadly into the neighborhood um, and then um, we would look for under task a2 some analysis and recommendations based on best available data and uh, we'd be interested in seeing crash data, volume increases, and safety concerns on Walker's Brook, unintended alternative routes due to poor level of service, that's LOS, uh, at existing intersections, and proposed improvements to Lakeview Avenue. And we will need, uh, need that to be provided by the applicant. So, um, and again, we go on to say, uh, to refer back to the comments 1 through 12 on pages 8 and 9 of 21 of the neighborhood response to Eaton Lakeview Apartments Chapter 40B Comp Permit Application dated February 20th, 2018. Um, so task B was the initial memo. Under task on A will be provided to staff, the applicant, and the Zoning Board of Appeals for initial comment and discussion. Subsequent to this, an additional review will be required to evaluate new information submitted by the applicant in response to the initial peer review memorandum. The consultant will coordinate with the applicant and or town officials during the course of the technical review of the supplemental and revised uh, documents and prepare a final memorandum of findings, a summary of consultant comments and if appropriate recommendations to address issues. And there's some additional language in there about meetings and schedules and um, cost and that kind of thing. But I think I'll, I'll stop there before I okay. put the whole room to sleep. Uh, then first I would ask uh, board members uh, if they, they have any questions on the uh, scope uh, for Jean. I mean, yes, for Jean. I was going to say Julie, but uh, I'm not going to do that to Julie tonight. I'm still here. <laughs> um, any questions uh, or comments? 
I guess Julie, Jean. Uh, I see we, get, we received a letter today from the applicant's uh, tra uh, transportation engineer uh, on there. Does the scope of services take into account? Can you use your microphone? Oh. Does, does the uh, proposal take into account the uh, applicant's uh, letter today received from their uh, transportation engineer? It doesn't specifically mention it um, in my read, but I think that the one of the objectives of, of tonight was for the board and the neighborhood and the development team to discuss the proposed scope of services and sort of come to some agreement right. about what would end up being included. Right, right. And, and, and I, I would think the uh, applicant may have some uh, comment on this tonight, too, and we'll wait till then. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Anyone else? Not at this time for me. Oh, okay. I do have one question. Um, I, I guess I didn't see specifically on the scope, but the one concern that I have on the traffic is the intersection on to Walker's Brook. Um, right now that light services um, basically only the bank on one side and all of Walker's Brook on the other side. Um, I wondered if uh, we were going to look at that uh, possibly for redesign or whatever because that is the major access route. Um, John, so, you're talking about the intersection of Walker's Brook Drive and Lakeview Avenue. Mm -hmm. that, that was included in the original traffic impact and access study. Okay. Um, and it is listed actually just right at the top of the screen. Okay. Right. If you have further concerns, then... Well, I, I just bring that up because I didn't specifically see that. So, with no other concerns from the board, I'm going to ask the uh, applicant our tech, our, you said you had a comment to make at first, and then um, you wanted to address what was in our scope. And after you do that, I would like to go to the neighborhood. Um, anybody here this evening who want to come in under uh, public uh, comment? But uh, first, I would uh, like to hear from the applicant. Would you like me to bring your scope up on the screen? Oh, sure. My name is Ted Brignante, uh, and I'm an attorney in Wakefield, and I'm the attorney for this proposal. What I'd like to do, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, is to bring you up to date as to where we are on the project and what is happening uh, in the next few weeks. As I indicated uh, to the board at, uh, at last month's meeting, we agreed to work uh, and to meet with uh, the neighbors in the area to discuss their concerns that were so very well presented to the board at the last meeting. And consistent with that, uh, we set up a meeting, uh, mostly uh, Oriana was uh, instrumental in helping us set up a meeting with a, a very good uh, representative group uh, of the neighbors at my office, and that was on April 12th. And we had members of our team uh, present at that time, and we, we had a very, very good exchange of ideas. What was expressed to us by Boreana and by the other members of the team is the concerns that they had addressed to the board. Most importantly, 
was the number of units, the 120 units, they felt that the number of units was in excess of what that site can carry. Number two, they were concerned about the height of the buildings. And number three, the massing and the layout, especially with regard to the units uh, on Eaton and had suggested a, a transition, that we have some kind of a transition so that the units being constructed would be more in line uh, with single family homes along, along Eaton Street. I think that's a fair statement. And anything that I say, Mariana, if I misrepresent it, I'm, you know, I'm sure you will stand up, but uh, I, I think what I've said so far is correct. Uh, they also were concerned about uh, the amount of parking and had expressed an interest in increasing the green space and, and really the overall design of the project. So we, what we agreed to do is to come back to them with an alternative plan. So I can tell you definitely the plan that you have in front of you that we presented is not the plan that we're going forward with. What we're going to do, uh, actually we're working on it uh, now and we, we hope to finish the draft of it by, by next week, is a new plan that addresses those concerns about the number of units, the massing, the design, all of those things that Oriana and her group had mentioned. And then we have set up a meeting, another meeting on May 15th with the group in which we will take our plans and sit down and get their feedback on the revised plans. And I, I don't expect that those discussions will conclude with one meeting. I, I think that we'll probably get some feedback and there may and there certainly be additional interplay between Boriana's group and, and our team. And I would probably estimate that we would be looking at maybe one, maybe two, uh, whatever it takes uh, to come back with a plan, hopefully a plan that both sides can live with, but if not, at least a plan that we have in response and uh, Oriana's group in response to it. But I can tell you, the same way I made the commitment that we would sit down and work with them, I'm making you the commitment that we're going to do, uh, take reasonable steps to uh, reduce, we will definitely be re reducing the size of this project substantially, but to address all of those other issues. So. I think rather tonight than debating the original plan, which was shelving, I, I, I think it's not time well spent uh, to talk about that plan. I, I think we're better off, uh, of course, always listening to folks in the audience, but I, I don't think it makes sense to debate the plan because we're not going forward with, uh, with the original plan. What I would suggest to the board is that we have another meeting uh, further out that would give us the amount of time to see if we can work out some kind of a compromise uh, plan that would satisfy everyone. Now, Julie had uh, circulated a memo uh, as far as everyone's scheduled, and I saw in that memo that July 18th was a date that the, uh, all of the members who are here this evening would be available. I would respectfully uh, suggest that that's a good day. I think that timing is good because it would give us plenty of time to have several meetings and then we would come back to you and, and report the progress and then we could further uh, you know, discuss from your point of view uh, what the proposal is. So um, that that's my general statement about uh, uh, proceeding. Um, so I don't know whether uh, Leanne wants to add something to that. If, if she does, I'm going to give up the microphone. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we really thank your efforts. You, you have a, a wonderful team that you put together, and, and the meeting was extremely constructive. Thank you.
So that's what I have to say, Mr. Chairman, on a general introduction. And then when you're ready, uh, we can talk about the uh, uh, period. Um, well, at this point, at this point, uh, the intention was to review um, from both sides the scope of the traffic because no matter what happens, the traffic still has to be addressed. If you're stating right now that that is going to be impacted by what this revision in the plan for the whole project, um, that pretty much takes off the table unless there's, until we open up the public portion of the hearing, um, anything for us to do. The only other issue was the phase two um, that was done so early, um, which probably will also be impacted by a major change in the uh, project that you're proposing. So, um, Gene? Yep. I think um, while we're all here together, um, I see, I see two things going forward. I see the um, review of what the applicant has come back with in terms of the scope of the traffic study for the peer review. I also see that there are people here that came out tonight and may have comments. So um, however the board wishes to do that, um, I just want to encourage everyone in the audience that did come out that we, would, we, we definitely want you to um, make your comments and um, that's the whole point of the public hearing, is to hear from the public. So um, we don't want to get too far into the detail of scope and engineering and all of that. We don't want to lose the important part of what we do in these meetings, which is hear from the public. So if we want to do the technical part first, and then ask people to make comments afterwards um, and invite them to, to come to the podium and, and make any comments they want to make. Um, that might be one way of going at it. Well, I would ask uh, Ted if he wants to go through this or does, would he rather hear additional comments from the public and then come back to that at a later time? I think it makes sense for us to discuss uh, the traffic peer review for a few minutes okay. and then folks will, will have the benefit of that if they want to make comment on this. Well, that's our normal process. Right. So that I, want I think to that makes a great deal okay. of sense. So uh, let me uh, suggest uh, uh, the approach that uh, we would like to take. First of all, I think it makes a great deal of sense to get the peer review engineer on board sooner rather than later. So I think we ought to go forward with that and uh, you know that, that way we'll get an estimate of the amount of money and so we can make the deposit into the account so you'll have that money available to do that. Now, uh, to the extent that changes are made in the plans as a result of meeting with Boreana's group, it, it may change, it may change the scope of the uh, traffic period. It may change. What we were suggesting, and Kim, my traffic engineer, is here, and he can go through this in, in detail in a more technical manner, but from, a, uh, from my point of view, what I would suggest makes a great deal of sense is to get the peer review engineer on board and have the peer review engineer at least begin the initial review, that is to review what's been presented by us. And then, at the same time, be prepared to recommend uh, the scope, taking into consideration what Julie has presented and taking into consideration what we have presented, and then you can get his professional opinion as to whether it should be more or less, and then you'll have the benefit of that, and then of course you're the decision maker, and you make the decision on that basis. But at least he will have done the preliminary. And the real issue, I think, and maybe Kim can speak to this more than I can, is the extent of the expansion. That is, how much more should be expanded, or should be presented by us 
above and beyond the traffic report. And that, that's where I think it would make sense, a great deal of sense, to hear from your traffic engineer. And then we can respond to that, uh, whatever he determines is necessary, and we will supplement the report with additional information as he calls for uh, in, in his scoping, and then he will review that. So kind of taking it in phases, but getting him on board in the beginning and getting him up to speed on what we've presented so that he's in a better position to make recommendations to you. And then he would, uh, he would hopefully be available at that meeting on the 18th to, to bring you folks up to date. So let me, Kim might want to add something to that. I'm not, what I've given you is from the layman's point of view. <laughs> Uh, good evening. Uh, <clears throat> this is not my normal voice, I'm saying. Uh, my name is Kim Hazabardi, and I'm with Tech LLC Traffic Engineer. Uh, and I'm going to give you an overview of what I had in mind. Uh, I propose a multi-phase approach to a peer review. First, first of all, uh, I, I agree the consultant should be on board as soon as possible. Uh, phase one would be reviewing the materials that are in hand already. Uh, that would include the, uh, the traffic study, uh, the uh, site plans, which aren't available now, but the new site plans. Right? And um, there are other documents like the neighbor's report uh, that the uh, consultant would have available as well. Uh, at that point, uh, I suggest uh, the review consultant provide a, a proposal, a key proposal to conduct that phase one review. So phase one, the way I've written it up, is very similar to task A in the town's, uh, the town's uh, RFP. Uh, but uh, it doesn't include the expansion of the study area. Uh, any expansion of the study area would come after the uh, town consultant has reviewed the materials that are already completed. And that would be covered in uh, one phase. So phase one would be reviewing the materials on hand. Uh, phase two would be uh, the applicant team responding to those comments. And then phase three would be a back and forth until the traffic issues are resolved. Uh, and uh, again, on the uh, fee for the uh, peer review consultant, I can see a uh, cost being developed now for phase one. Uh, but uh, the back and forth that happens afterward, the subsequent phase would be uh, on a proposal as you go basis. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions on that. Others, any questions? Not yet, sir. Not yet. When we open it up for public comment. So I don't think there's any difference between what, what I had suggested and, and what Kim was talking about. So it's, it's basically phasing it. Uh, and probably when we make the initial deposit, it, it'll, it'll, it'll cover phases one and two so that, you know and, and of course uh, under the regulations if if, uh, if we need to make additional deposits uh, of course we'll do that could I ask uh, Gene and Gene right uh, in, in terms of the applicant's proposal uh, on the phase one and the phase two um, you already have a traffic uh, peer review specialist in mind. Yes. The scope is printed. You have that. Yes. Um, do you have any problems with uh, moving forward on the applicant's proposal on under their phase one and phase two of uh, your scope and sequence? Um, so yes, I have the peer, the traffic consultant that we've used on the other 40 Bs that has come before this board in the past year. Um, was the, the consultant that I've been working with and talking to and, and asking broadly um, how much time it would take, what's the round figure number of what something like this would cost, the full scope that we put together, not the phase scope that the applicant is talking about. So I have a good idea on what that number is and what that time frame is to do the full scope. I can understand the applicant's suggestion that um, t doing it in phases might result in um, a, a more co cohesive approach to it. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not losing the, um, the, 
the, the other pieces in that everyone is, is in agreement that the broader scope is ultimately where we will end up. It's just a question of how you get there. Do you do it all at once or do you do it in phases? In my mind, um, it really doesn't matter to me. Um, I think that's really more up to the board. But it sounds like if, I, if I'm saying it correctly, what the scope that we put together said let's do it all at once in a, in a broad sweep of all these extra intersections and what the applicant is saying let's do it in phases so I think we're saying the same things just different ways of getting there may I respond to that mr. chairman Go ahead. I, I think the only difference is that what I'm suggesting uh, is that the uh, traffic peer review engineer actually recommend to the board what the expansion should be. It may be more, it may be less, and then the board, based upon that recommendation, would make a decision uh, so that the, you know, you're relying upon his expertise in telling you what should be studied. I think that's the only difference. Uh, I think substantively we're on the same page. I guess I'm looking at uh, the, the, the total number of intersections. Is that is this an issue with you right now, in terms of the your traffic engineer? The, the scope involves uh, more than what you had initially perceived. Yes, I, I, I want another engineer to look at it and, and weigh in uh, with an opinion uh, before we expand it. The number of intersections uh, would be very large uh, for a project with this trip generation. And some of the intersections internal to the neighborhood are, are actually low volume intersections uh, where we start off with a level of service A and end, end up with a level of service A. And an engineer could, could look at the intersections and, uh, and make a judgment on it. It would, be, it would be the town's engineer, not the applicant's engineer. So it wouldn't be my opinion, it would be the town's engineer's opinion. Well, I, as part of the scope of sequence, uh, on the schedule that the gene had put together there is a uh, three three <coughs> different time frames that the engineer uh, the peer engineer would be working with the town and gene and, and the town our staff are the ones that uh, are working with the board to recommend to us uh, so I, th I think if, if gene is satisfied with this uh, that's not a concern that we have. So I think also uh, giving them, giving the peer engineer the scope and sequence, there's nothing wrong with that I see on the board side. Um, the only difference is that how the engineer is going to address it, especially with our town staff, um, and ultimately with you, the developer, uh, is just a sequential issue. Um, because in the long run, I think all of this information is going to come out. If, if indeed some of those intersections are scrapped because they're not seen by the outside peer review engineer, then uh, and Gene uh, is satisfied with that. Um, I don't think the board is going to have a problem with that. <coughs> board? No. no. Not, not at all. No. Hey, me. May I comment? Mr. Yes, Chairman, we have full confidence in, in Gene and, and Julie, you know, being the inter intermediary here and directing directing the whole process and working. I and mean, I can tell you that if the traffic engineer determines we need to study this or that, that's what we're going to study. Yeah. Just a comment. Uh, I, uh, I'm psycho at. I don't have a problem with what the developer is suggesting here at all. The only question I would raise is that if we decided tonight to move is this thing on, you're on. Yeah, yep. it is. I turn it. Yeah. Uh, if we decided to move out tonight, which I think we're we're saying we're going to do, how quickly could we turn on the peer reviewer with a contract? Oh, right away. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to have your new revised plan probably available next week, I think you said? Uh, we would have it available, but we want to meet with Boreana, and, uh, you know, that may take, I mean, we're meeting, we have a scheduled meeting on the 15th of May, but it may take more than one meeting, so I, I, I'd rather come back 
So you're not planning. You're not planning to submit a revised proposal to the to the town until you've had a review and a, I guess I would say a, an agreement between you and the community. Well, hopefully an agreement. <laughs> where their position is and where our position is if there's a difference if, mm. if there's no difference and we come up with with something that both parties can live with then then we'll, we'll submit that but uh, i would respectfully request that we be given ample time uh to do that i, I don't think that the boreana's group wants to feel pressured that you know they've got to respond on the 15th if we need one or two meetings after that we want to do that I think it's a great idea. This work, this workshop concept, I think, is really good, and uh, it may be a model, as someone said at the last meeting, for future. Uh, but obviously, you've thought it through. Uh, the size issue, is, and you've got a plan going as to what you want to go to. Can you share any of that unofficially, or I can't say unofficially, but can you share any of that with the people here this evening? I, I'd rather not until we've actually met uh, with Boriana and her group. I mean, I can tell you generally that it will be a substantial reduction in units, it will be a reduction in height of the buildings and, and the design and the massing. But I don't want to get into detail until we've done our plan and sat down with Boreana's group. It would be uh, presumptuous on my part to do that without 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 having that meeting. The other thing uh, is that at the meeting that we had, the workshop, uh, both Julie, uh, I think both, uh, you, were both yeah. you were both present, uh, and that was extremely you know helpful. And we would invite the you know them to be present uh, uh, at our other at a, on the 15th and other meetings. Well, I've, I've expressed the first two public meetings my serious concern about the size of this thing. And uh, okay, I'll wait. I'll just accept the fact that you use the word significant. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you. So I just want to make a quick comment going back to the traffic peer review. The neighborhood group spent a significant amount of time and effort and expertise and thought in their letter that they wrote to you. And so I would just want to make sure before you go down a path with, you know, going with the phased scope versus the full scope that you hear from the neighborhood as to whether that's acceptable to them or if they might have some suggestions for a way to meet in the middle um, or really anything. Any other comments from the board? Hearing no, none? Not, not at this time, no. Okay. Hearing none, we do have to make a decision tonight on this. We do not have to make take the vote at this particular time. So I, I would like to hear comments from individuals. I would ask, number one, that uh, when you come to the podium or up to the front to make your comments, that you give us your name and your address, uh, and you keep... Um, the comments that you have uh, try to be as concise as possible. I mean, we still have a fair group here tonight. It wasn't as big as it was the last two meetings, but um, we would like to hear everybody. And um, so, be respectful. Yes, just be respectful. Oriana, do you want to start off? You just take it out of there. There you go. It's on. It's on. I just got to hold it up close. <laughs> okay, you hear yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, thank you, Pat, for the kind words, and thank you to everybody, the um, development team, people there, family, for talking to us, for taking into account our concerns. We are hopeful we reach a good solution here. That's why we put on the effort, and that's why we'll keep participating and uh, looking for a good solution. I want to thank uh, Jean and Julie for taking into account our concerns about traffic when they put together the proposal for the scope. And while I do see Kim, Kim's point in saying uh, 
if you would like another professional, like professional traffic engineer to weigh in, I ask you to take into account the concerns of the neighborhood. Some of them, please just go drive in that area, look at the intersection, like view, what we do drive. Mr. Drama asked for a solution. So, so far, traffic study and the scope is not actually looking into a sol for solutions. And we've talked to Kim, and I think Kim had lots of good ideas who uh, he shared with us. We don't think that this project is causing the problem. The problem is pre-existing. This project is making the problem worse, exacerbating it. So if we decrease the scope of the project, that helps. However, Kim offered lots of ideas. So he, he, he was talking about like um, a traffic light, uh, having the bank, uh, uh, going to uh, Lakeview and that the intersection gets moved. He talked about the rotary, which in New England, when you have lots of roads coming from different directions, rotary makes sense. So I know it's not in the scope, but for us in the neighborhood, if the good ideas coming out of this from the traffic engineers, we don't expect the developer to execute, but we've heard from the town that there is interest to fix it. We heard that eventually there can be a grant from the state. So if there's solutions, if we can get ideas what can be done, please do that. We, we really need it. That would be a good outcome. So I, I think more neighbors want to express their views, and thank you very much. Anyone else? This gentleman here. Yeah, I just want to be. Just can you say your name, please? All I'm asking for is to take into effect the hill. We, we need your name. I'm sorry. Your name? Larry Grushel. Larry. Can you add your address? On Eaton Street is a blind spot. You come down from Green Street or, or down from the Salem Street, you come up, and as soon as you hit Eaton Street, there's a hill. Uh, and uh, comes up this way and goes down that way and the uh, uh, neighbors across the street just off to the uh, little part of the hill have a child they've been complaining that they even want a sign from the town to say child uh, it's a it's a blind spot it's been there for i've been for 47 years we do on top of the little hill so we don't have that problem but if you're on that side or that side the car can roll they just shoot down so, so you bring it in when you're doing it Thank you. It's the traffic jam. Yes, go ahead. So good evening, my name is Joyce Gould. I live north of Green Street on John Street. There are three of us property owners right there, and that's a bad intersection already. And our concern is much of what's already been said. There's issues with the traffic from 129 backing up in front of our homes so we can't aggress or enter our homes already. And the increase in traffic and cut through, you know, from this improvement in having more housing, which, you know, is great, um, but it'll just be more of a load on this, you know, egress cut through on John Street onto 129. So I understand, you know, wanting to limit the study. And I also understand if it's a small flow street, you know, you said type A to type A, maybe that's not the issue. We're already a big flow problem at that north end of John Street. So we really just ask you to look at that as you're looking at study impacts in the neighborhood. Thank you. Gina Dumar, this is Here we Yeah. Okay, um, Gina Dumar, 153. Um, just to elaborate on something Larry said, I believe he was actually talking about our house, which we do have a toddler, and um, that is a concern with the. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, we do have a toddler, so it does concern me that we have a hill there. I've requested a blind driveway sign, and we are. We are given it, so that's a concern of cars speeding over that hill. And the complex is going to be right there. So that's one concern I have of cars coming and going from that area. 
Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was the Pleasant Street intersection was left out from the study, the proposed study. Um, so I just wanted to make a mention of that because that seems extremely important where there are children there, um, especially this time of the year, anywhere between end of April and into the fall. I think that seriously needs to be considered looked at just because it's kids, the playground, the ball park. So if that's not included. Can I clarify Pleasant Street and which other street? Pleasant Street uh, and Eaton Street. It's it's included. Included. It, is included. it was included it is in included. the original TIAS report. Oh, it's a oh, like the timing that the data was taken was not optimal? I'm assuming, yeah. Well, it wasn't, it most likely wasn't done during Little League season, which is okay. a huge difference. If okay. you go by there today, there's traffic on both sides of the street parked, and there's kids running in and out of cars. So, yeah, that is a huge concern. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tony DeRosso, 130 John Street. Uh, as for the phasing of the study, I noticed that in the town's version it says best available data. Is it my understanding that no more or no additional turning movement counts would be made for any of the additional intersections that are included in the expansion of the study? We don't know yet. I would have to ask, uh, at this point, I would have to ask either Julie or Jean on that. He's supposed to have this additional turning movement counts. Can you say your question again? Sorry. For the town's proposed phasing, it refers to best available data. Mm -hmm. Would additional turning movement counts be included for any intersection that is added to the expansion? So are you saying would we ask for best available data to be used for anything that's added? No, I'm okay, saying so will we add additional turning movement counts? So would we actually have a count as opposed to pulling up data that may be three or four years old? No. For the additional Just available data. Collecting data. My understanding is peer review is not allowed to collect any data. They can only review oh. the actual study. Therefore, any data collection would have to be done by yeah. the applicant. Yeah. Correct. We are talking about best available data looking at what's been provided by the applicant. We're not talking about, at this point, this scope didn't anticipate going in and, and doing more raw data collection. I think that's your question, right? Correct. Okay, are we collecting raw data? And we say that, um, we say that it's best available data. So I don't know what that might be. Well, so when I wrote this scope, I was anticipating that any additional intersections that are added would require some additional data collection. Um, True, but it's not listed in the scope, therefore it may or may not be included based yeah. on what the applicant okay. feels like. So maybe we would need to clarify that. Yes, yeah, right. I think so. Right. Thank uh, you. Number two, I just wanted to clarify, I, I don't have a problem with the expanded phasing or the expansion of the intersections based on what the two experts say. But I think there should be, at this time, specific intersections, I would say Journal Way and Lakeview, that are referenced so that we have a minimum. And then if there's additional expansion, the two experts can, can, can uh, then cash that out. Thank you. Those are included in the original study. And, and oh, it wasn't? No. Okay. And, and that's the reason why uh, I think the recommendation from the uh, peer review engineer would be important. And it addresses the first question uh, that this gentleman uh, raised, that is uh, whether or not we have to come up with additional data that would be within his review to make that recommendation one way or the other. Tony, can you say what the two intersections were that you were interested in? Um, I would say General Way and, um, and Walkersbrook 
-hmm. as one of the major, and I'm thinking John and Green may be the other major intersection. I'm not certain. Uh, I think maybe Salem and Eaton. Okay, Salem and Eaton. Salem. What distance away? Well, we're still taking input, so let's let's continue on public input. And I would like to mention one thing, um, probably I'm not sure you already put in consideration. This is a very densely settled area, and there are so many road and intersections. And uh, when you think about the rebuild or doing something, um, I just want to mention that uh, you have limited space there. Uh, no space. We, uh, I live there, um, I see children play, and uh, we have school bus coming in the morning and the afternoon. There are a lot of kids around, and people take a walk, and, uh, and they walk their dog and their children uh, in front of my home house. It's very, it happens every day, morning and day, and evening, very, very often. So please kind of count those in, and, uh, taking into consideration. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Hi, my name's Tony Riddle. My name's Tony riddle -Lake. I'm at 11 Appleton Lane. Um, it's my understanding that any children that would inhabit this development would be attending the killing school. And I was wondering if the board would consider adding to its scope um, any impacts uh, to traffic at that school. It, it's already fairly tight there. Uh, the school is bursting at the seams and in the interest of um, actually uh, producing a holistic community-wide study, uh, I would request the board to, to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Good evening. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm nine Link you out. And the, um, <coughs> there was mention of the traffic study, maybe dismissing <coughs> some study of some intersections that are considered low volume. I'd be interested in knowing which which those intersections are. You had mentioned you had mentioned just you might dismiss and leave out of the study of the internal intersections that were that are considered low volume. I'm curious to know which those which those low volume intersections are. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> use the microphone. Bottom line, uh, <clears throat> we we did a traffic study that included. Um, Intersections like uh, Pleasant and uh, Eaton, and we had good level of service there. Yep, during Little League season, it might, you know, a little bit different traffic, but even so, the impact of the project will be minor. Uh, and um, the safe driveway intersections along uh, Lakeview, along Lakeview, we combined all the traffic into one drive, it was a good level of service. Uh, what I would suggest is uh, rely on the town's consultant uh, to work on that. No, don't don't listen to me on that. Listen to the town's consultant on that uh, for an answer. Well, whether it's you or the town listening, there are no low volume intersections in any of this property at all. And all you need to do is live there for a while and you realize that. So that's something that needs to be considered. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard this evening? Hearing none. Um, at this point, Jean, do you have any conclusive conclusions? Uh, the only point that I'd like to make, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, is that um, I think that if we are going to go with a phased approach, I think we should all keep an open mind going forward. I, I, I would like to think that the 
process so far has been very collaborative, and I am appreciative of that. Um, and I think before we say it's going to be up to any one person, that this really is a community project and a community impact, and I'd really like to see it continue to be uh, evaluated in a collaborative and open fashion, however that transpires. Thank you. Well, it appears at this point we, the board has uh, to make a decision. And uh, before the board, there seems to be two options. Option one is to take the scope and sequence that was prepared by the, uh, by the town staff, um, which is a complete um, evaluation by the peer, re peer review engineer for traffic. Uh, which does, by the way, under task C on their review, um, indicates that the consultant will attend a minimum of two ZBA public hearings, present findings and recommendations, and service for meetings, including co coordination, preparation, travel, and attendance and participation. Basically, uh, if I'm understanding this right, Gene, that means that uh, the engineer that we have used in the last couple of 40Bs, uh, especially the last one, um, has always given staff members an update on what has been being done so that they, uh, the staff would always know what's being done. In the phase aspect of it, which is the second option, um, we're looking at uh, moving forward on just specifically um, A1 um, and giving it some recommendations from the A2 data, which is the analysis and recommendation. So, um, unless Gene wants to elaborate on that, I would ask the board um, how they feel relative to either one of those options, which appears to be before us this evening. Um, I think to clarify your option two, the phased approach, were you talking about um, using the applicant's phased approach and then maybe incorporating some of the additional intersections that we heard are, from the neighborhood are important to be reviewed? Well, we heard some additional uh, intersections that were brought up this evening. Um, I think from the standpoint of the staff, um, you want to include that. The question is, um, if we work with this particular peer review consultant, uh, the peer review consultant has, has been um, extremely thorough in the past in working with us. Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. in error. Um, if we give them what uh, the staff is now done on the scope and sequence of the traffic review, uh, we certainly can incorporate uh, the phase aspect of it, which the um, applicant wishes us to do. Um, however, if we go with the phase development, it appears that uh, the engineer may be hindered in some way, um, but ultimately the peer review engineer is going to come back to the board. That's who they're servicing. You're going to get, the applicant's going to get the information back to them in a, um, a proper, appropriate time frame so that certainly you, you can react to that. At least this is my perception. I want to hear the rest of the boards too. Um, and, I, and I think by giving us that, uh, it allows you to get the proper uh, budget aspect of it so that we can go out for um, determination for the peer reviews to start. Certainly, regardless of what happens in the scope and sequence of what you're proposing and the changes of the development, all of that is going to be impacted, um, will impact the traffic study. Um, just the numbers are going to be a little bit smaller. Um, if you're if you're reducing the size and scope of, of the buildings, M my thought right now is that if we go with the scope and sequence that has been prepared, 
and we let you, the applicant, know exactly what's happening so that you can chime in. You're chiming in with the, the rest of the neighborhood anyways with the meetings that you're holding. I would ask, I would ask that um, this becomes a liquid type of or transparent type of situation that as you're negotiating with the neighborhood, you're also keeping the staff informed as to what is going on. The peer review is working from the other side of that. They're, they're coming back to the staff to, show, to telling them what they are perceiving and, and what their recommendations are gonna be as we proceed through, which the staff can give not only to the board, but to the applicant for your, in, your input, which goes back to the neighborhood again. So I think if we make this cyclic, uh, it doesn't make any difference which one we go with, but we do need um, at the aspect of the amount to be put in the fund. Um, and I think right now, Gene is asking for that, so we have enough in there to, to accomplish this. I don't think that really the reaction of how we're gonna go with either one of these is gonna be uh, critical if we stay in a cyclic format and we can uh, be transparent enough to, to be going back and forth. And it seems that that's what you want to do right now anyways. Can I just make a comment? Gene. Yeah. Um, so what we're talking about is, do we go with the expanded scope with all of the intersections that the neighbors have, um, have outlined that they have concerns about? Or do we abbreviate the scope and do it incrementally and try and figure out with the consultant's input if we really need to do all of that analysis of all the intersections. Um, from my way of looking at things, given the fact that it's already May and we're gonna be getting into summer, that's something else to think about. People start going on vacation, um, starting to get work done is a little bit trickier. So if we were to go with the full scope, the peer review consultant has told me that they can get it done within about a month. So we'll have it done before everyone goes off on summer and starts taking vacation time and all of that. That's my only concern with the time frame of doing this abbreviated scope then coming back in July, and July can be a tricky month. So my, my opinion would be, you know, unless, unless the applicant can, can give us a, a really good um, idea of, of how to avoid that, you know, we could, we could get into summer schedules and even with the consultants, it could slow it down. Whereas if we just did it now, it'd be done. And I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any, it's not that much more money to do the full scope. So it may just be easier to just do it. And then what I'm hearing from the neighbors is they want to have the extra, almost all of the extra, except for two or three, are, are, are what neighbors are saying they want to have evaluated. So um, it's not, I think we should just do it. Okay, I'm gonna start with the question. The expanded traffic study, uh, the applicant would be preparing that, am I correct on that? Oh, all right, it's gonna take me over a month. No, no. Uh, no. To no, you, if I'm doing it. no. peer review. Uh, we were initially thinking that the peer reviewer would do it. Oh, they do the whole thing? The whole thing. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and they can do it in a month? Mm -hmm. well, well, don't hold me to a month, but yeah. about that. Um, the intention here, I think, is to get something done before we meet in July of 18. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, July seems to be a long ways away, but as things go, uh, it is not a long time. Well, a couple of things. Uh, one is, I don't know if, uh, if the peer review consultant can do the expanded analysis that quickly. That, that, that seems like a really fast schedule to me, because they're going to have to go out and do traffic counts. Uh, and they're going to have to uh, analyze the data and they're going to have to write a, write a report just like I would. Uh, and it takes me longer than a month to do all that. Usually uh, usually six to eight weeks, to be honest with you. Uh, then the other question is um, the number of intersections. Um, 
I really do believe an engineer should also weigh in on it. Uh, some intersections, uh, just applying engineering judgment and doing a field visit, you can see, ah, this one needs to be studied. Or, or you might say, this one has traffic volumes uh, that we can visually tell based on our uh, education and years of experience. Uh, analyzing the intersection would not be a productive use of time, money, or whatever. I really would like the, the scope of intersections not to be set in stone. And I, I, I would like the town to have his input, the applicant to have his input, uh, and, uh, and the review consultant to actually have its input. I, I, I think it would be the most productive uh, way of handling things. At least give the review consultant a chance to weigh in on whether uh, whether they think that scope uh, should be changed. Okay. It sounds reasonable that we would ask the peer review consultant to give us their feedback on this expanded list of intersections. Um, but I don't. I wouldn't want to say that that would mean that we didn't do any of them. Um, it, we might, you know, bring it back for con further consideration, um, depending on what they say. What, what the review consultant might do is look at the. Um, numbers that the project is adding to the network uh, and let's say the project is adding 30 vehicles going in a particular direction uh, and an intersection uh, that is being considered is uh, in that direction but won't likely receive all 30 vehicles let's say it receives 10 vehicles uh, that review consultant might make a judgment uh, that even if they ran the computer models it might only show an increase in delay of a few seconds and it's just not worth analyzing and an experienced consultant can, can make those judgments I think we're also looking at beating the clock um, and the calendar uh, in basically four weeks. School is out. It's a completely different situation. Uh, when school doesn't come back into session until, again, September, so we've got a gap in the middle, and we're trying to make decisions on the traffic count and everything else. We need to get started, I believe, as soon as possible. And we've worked with this peer consultant before um, in a very difficult area. And I think that staff has confidence in this particular uh, peer review as a consultant um, that we might be able to accomplish some of that but if we don't get started immediately we're going to perhaps miss a piece of the calendar okay so I, I, I think it's important to consult and start right away and, and, start and look at the intersections so so the determination can be made uh, so at least if, if the uh, study area to the extent that the study area expands it counts happening before school ends Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Nick? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I have a question about our peer review consultant with, in regards to the expansion area. Um, are they going to be generating any data or looking at DOT data? And will the applicant's uh, consultant be able to provide his uh, analysis and rebuttal possibly of that data as well? Because my question is, with the expansion and our peer review providing a peer review analysis, if the uh, original traffic reviewer did not include this in his original analysis, will they have a chance to respond? Yes. Yes, it will be an iterative process, okay. by all means. Um, so we, in reviewing the feedback we got from the consultant, um, the time frame we were given is four to six weeks, but we are estimating July 18th is about 10 weeks out from now. So we feel that we should have time to get this going. Thanks. Also, John. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that we should go with the town's recommendation. I'd like to get as much data as possible. Um, I think everyone's clear that the uh, community impact on this is definitely going to be parking and the intersections. I don't think that that's going to go away, even if the massing and density does. Um, we're still going to want to see the impact to the environs um, just due to the uh, construction and congestion of the intersecting streets. I, I think that, I think if you take the uh, intermittent approach that the applicant is proposing, I think it can minimize what the um, what the community is looking for in terms of data and feedback in order to make informed decisions 
not only about the current project, which we know is going to change, but also how that might impact the next project. And if we're going to be looking at six to eight weeks to, um, you know, do each phase, why wouldn't we just, you know, compress it all into one period of six to eight weeks rather than two separate ones? Because um, I remember back when we met in February, the idea was to jump on this particular um, consultant so that we could get some raw data and that all the other consultants would, you know, be derived from any change that might come from the proposal. But it seems like maybe we're dragging our feet with the one thing that we could agree with at the last meeting, which is let's get something that we can actually kind of sink our teeth into and start um, start analyzing. So for those reasons, I think let's go with the town's recommendation. <coughs> I tend to agree with that, uh, mainly from the standpoint that time is important. And uh, if we can get this contract going and out on the street for the peer review to start, reviewer to start his work, uh, and if we're talking about a July 18th next meeting, which is, I'll say it's a long way out, but it's not a long way out. And, the, and time is moving on. And everyone's going to have a chance to review what this peer reviewer comes up with developer, the community, the board, the town. And I think, you know, whether we like it or not, phase two that you propose, we're going to have this anyway, some way or another. And uh, the only thing that bothered me about your proposal was phase three is continuing comments and responses. If we're going to have that kind of thing, then it behooves us to get moving. And so I would say let's take what the town has come up with and let's get it started. And I'd love to see some sort of data provided to us before that July meeting and have a discussion of that or presentation and discussion of that at that meeting. But if it's going to take six to eight weeks to do it, we better move out and try to accelerate that process. I, I would agree with that, uh, with, with uh, the other board members. Uh, I think what we have to do, though, is also be cognizant of the fact that there is going to be changes on this project from what we've heard tonight, and we could get some data done, but there is going to be changes, it sounds like, with the project, correct me if I'm wrong, to be downsized. Uh, there will be less vehicle trips out of that project, so there will be some changes uh, to the uh, uh, traffic study. But I, I do think it's important to get the uh, peer reviewer on board. I would like the peer reviewer then to be working with the applicant's traffic engineer, and the two of them can come to a meeting of the minds. And I think we are all in agreement what the major intersections are that have to be studied. And there are other intersections that the neighborhood has asked for. And, and I think if the uh, town and the town's peer reviewer, the, that engineer, gets together with the applicant's engineer, they can come to a meeting of the minds in regards to what intersections need to be further studied. Uh, and I, I would think that's the way to go uh, on that. Keep in mind, this, this is in, in, in looking at the uh, applicant's uh, Obviously, they're looking at uh, what this is going to cost, etc. It, it is not a lump sum fee, I assume, from the town's point of view. Uh, the town has a hourly uh, rate that they pay the peer reviewer for, and that's what they would go by. So he get, they get paid for actual work that they do. It's not a lump sum project on that. Um. So what, what we normally do, it, it depends. If we have a defined scope, we would say to the peer reviewer, give us a price for the scope of work. And that would be what we would expect the contract to be for. If it's for $5,000, then that's the scope and that's the cost is 5,000 mm -hmm. and we're done. Now, that will only anticipate so many meetings with the zoning board. We're, we're guessing at how many we need. Um, more than likely, there's going to be more. We've seen that in, in prior complex projects like this, that there's often an additional demand of, of time on the peer reviewers to appear at the Zoning Board of Appeals meetings. So 
it's yes and no. Yes, it's a set amount for the defined scope, but as we know, that will probably get modified in more meetings for sure will be added. Thank you, Jane. Um, I've already made my concerns um, public. Um, I see that, I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, the major concern that I have is that, just like the other board members, we need to get all the information as soon as possible. This is only one of the specific areas that we discussed as being a, a possibility as a hurdle to get over as we go through this process in develop in this particular development of the 40B. It's important for that information to be shared and I think that because we're on this particular format on this particular project that we're, we're in we're trying to share amongst ourselves and that that is between the staff in the peer review, the applicant, um, the public, and don't forget the board that has to make the decision. So along with this information that's coming back on the traffic review, I would ask that uh, the board be kept up to uh, date on what was going on. Um, but also, as you go forward, on this information that's presented in, in feedback one back and forth between the applicant and the staff and the town and the uh, neighborhood that you must come up with solutions also if you find a problem you got to come up with a solution we need solutions and I'm thinking of one particular intersection that needs a solution so we need to have time to correct that also and if you don't, if we don't start it now, we're not going to complete it enough time to come up with that solution. So my uh, concern would be very much like the other members of the board. I think that the um, the, the scope and sequence presented by the uh, staff is uh, going to get us further in a shorter period of time. Now. I'm uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Chris Spurra, just a civil engineer on the project. Uh, I have a question uh, for Gene. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Absolutely. So, Gene, we've done a lot, a lot of projects through the years. Uh, I'm unaware of any peer review consultant that's going to generate their own data. We're, we're the ones who generate the data, and all they do is, is review it. Uh, they're not going to be analyzing these intersections, and that's what Kim was trying to explain. Um, I think we may have a I'm misunderstanding unless we're missing something. No, you're not missing anything. And if that's the approach you'd rather take, then I mean, by all means, you can do your own report, and then we can have the consultant review it. So the, the, the peer review consultant uh, offered to do the, the data collection. Yes, they did. On the additional intersections. Right. We don't know what that number is, of course, and what that number is going to be. Uh, to Kim's point, I, I just want to remind the board members, we talked about this uh, during the first public hearing, and it came up again during the second. We also pre presented this information at our neighborhood meetings. Uh, we didn't select the intersections. Um, it was a collaborative effort after attending um, uh, department review team meetings. Uh, Kim met with the public safety officials, including the uh, officials from the police department and DPW. And they determined together uh, with recommendations from the staff uh, what intersections you know, made the most sense based on their experience you know, being, being in the town as long as they have. So um, I, I would just uh, you know, reiterate that uh, what Kim said is that there are a lot of intersections there. We're going to be spending uh, a lot of time and effort. It's, it's not cheap doing these uh, intersection analyses. It would seem like a waste of time and money to analyze intersections that uh, two consultants, one representing the town and one representing the developer, could quickly come to a meeting of the minds and say, geez, you know, there's no reason to analyze this one. And I think that's where Kim was coming from. Thank you. Chairman, okay. I say one other thing with the board. Uh, instruct the staff, uh, Gene and Julie, to authorize the peer review engineer 
to communicate and to exchange information with Kim. And so I think that's the way we'll, we'll get everything done. Uh, the two of them uh, exchanging uh, information and uh, you know, hopefully they're going to come to a, a conclusion. That's typically how we do it with the town CC on all correspondence. Yeah. Yeah. And we would work through the staff, uh, yes. both of you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, I'll take a, uh, a motion from the board uh, to, uh, it appears, to accept the uh, scope and sequence presented by the staff uh, for the tap traffic review, review um, engineer. So moved. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All in favor of the vote? Show five zero zero. Okay. okay. Did you have a comment? Okay. Um, the only other, and I don't know if we want to get into that this evening or not. Um, is the um, phase two uh, environmental site assessment? Um, is this something um, we're prepared to get into this evening? Um, Chris Barrages, do you have an update on the phase one environmental study? Uh, thank you, Julia. Our, our firm is a civil site, uh, but I know that uh, we were able to track down the, uh, the complete phase two report. You remember it was uh, when it was scanned and cost it was every other page was missing. Uh, so we shared that with staff, and um, they have not uh, been able to put their hands on the, uh, the phase one report uh, uh, through the previous owner. Uh, we've reached out to them, we've reached out to the firm, and um, that's all we have to report right now, but we're, we're still looking for it. Okay, then what you're really saying is that we can't move forward on that at this particular time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to say that um, we've been very fortunate on this particular project um, in that the neighborhood, the applicant, uh, the staff has tried to move together as a unit um, to minimize the amount of time that it would take to go through this process, even though we have sufficient time. Um, I would ask, however, that when we're sharing this information, that the board be kept up to date on this, because it's very difficult for the board to come to a meeting uh, and have something given to them as they come into the meeting to make a decision on it. Uh, so it takes time to do that, and I understand that. But the board has to make that decision, um, which is best for the neighborhood, but also which is the best for the town. So we want to make sure that everything is done um, appropriately and in good, timely manner. So that's the comment I have. John, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. And in, in, in light of John's comment, uh, hearing what we heard tonight in regards to a revision to the plans, I'm sorry, and uh, that there will be a revision to the plans, in light of John's comments, I would like to make note for if, in fact, the July 18th will be the next meeting, and it sounded the applicant is comfortable with that. Uh, the, I request that the board or the town get these revised plans in advance 
and so that the board members can get that and review them. I would request at least a week in advance of that July 18th meeting, we have the revised plans. So you maybe want to get them to the town, you know, 10 days ahead or something, so the board members can have a week or so to review these plans uh, for that meeting. That, that, that was our plan. Yeah, okay. And that's why I, I thought the July, July 18th, 18th made sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have, see, I could, being a stickler, mm. being a stickler for dates, um, the 4th of July is exactly two weeks before that meeting. So I would say with 4th of July being on a Wednesday this year, that's going to make for, again, a little bit of a break that people will be on vacation and taking extended weekends. To avoid that, I would say, why don't we try and have everything to the town no later than Thursday, June 28th. That way we don't get anywhere near 4th of July. It leaves the board plenty of time to review it well in advance of the meeting on the 18th. And um, that's certainly, I think, reasonable. Um, I'll ask the two participants here. Uh, Ted? I, I think that's doable. Great. We, we're going to try. OK, OK. Yeah, that's all we can do. Um, I, want, I want to make mention, too, um, that this is a very unique, uh, and, you, and you already know that, a very unique type of a 40B. Um, you don't have to go forward with it, but we're going forward with it for specific reasons. Um, and again, it would profit the town. It would profit the community, it would profit the neighborhood. But without the staff that we have here in Reading, um, that would not be possible. And uh, one of our staff members is going to a uh, Chapter 40B conference called Shaping the 40B Process in Your Community uh, with a very unique type of setting. Um, and she should be congratulated for that. Uh, and that's uh, Jean, um, who is uh, the, going to be meeting on Friday, May the 4th. Um, it's a long conference down in Waltham, and this is one that's this is one that's held on a yearly basis. So I just wanted to recognize Jean this evening. Um, the other, other issue for, before the board, I believe this evening, is to uh, move to a certain uh, date certain for our next meeting. And it appears to be um, uh, July 18th. Uh, so I would uh, take a motion to move to continue the subject matter of this hearing. Um, to the 18th of July at 7 o'clock. Do we have a location yet? Um, as usual, we don't. So I would schedule it for the Board of Selectmen room um, at Town Hall, and then we will try to find another location, hopefully here. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Then, uh, if there's nothing else before the board this evening, um, I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Okay. Thank you for all coming this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.